So I graduated with my BFA ooh, during the pandemic. Wow. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I, I kept training after that, actually. And then, you know, I, I did a couple auditions for other projects and nothing really, nothing stuck yet. And then the first thing I actually booked was Marvel. Wow. Uh, yeah. What the hell? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay, go on, go on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but it's really hard for me not to slip into Tagalog right now. But um, I I got the audition. I mean, I had no idea who I was until I, I showed up for the, the fitting. <laughs> um, and then they're like, here's your Black Widow suit. And I didn't know. Um, but I actually did the first round of auditions. Um, I did a Russian accent and then a Filipino accent. Oh. And, yeah, and then a couple weeks or months had passed and um, I hadn't heard anything. Mm. And then one day I, it's so funny because I had stiff neck for the first time in my life, I think. And then someone from casting reached out to me and she was like, can you please redo these, these tapes um, with two Asian accents? And I was like, oh no, like I couldn't move my neck that day. And um, in the audition, you can actually see like me not moving. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, but uh, I got the news the next day that I that I had booked it, and then oh wow, yeah, yeah. Were you intimidated when you, when you found out that okay, I'm playing a black widow and I have to fight? What is your what is your like mindset coming into that? I was so excited. I was so excited because I've actually done when I was training. I did three years of stage combat. I oh, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I trained for three years and. I only wanted to do that. Like I, I was, I was going into the industry with that in mind of, of wanting to be in action and to fight mm -hmm. and um, showing up. And then obviously Heidi Moneymaker's on set and you're like, yeah. what, uh, what's happening? And I, it was just so, they were so kind to me. And, and I think they saw that I, I knew what I was doing. Yeah. And so they really entrusted me with, with doing uh, really cool stuff. <laughs> doing okay so so you work with florence who is i guess the the, the, the big star of the episode yeah she's obviously yeah. like you know she's like one of the she's probably one, gonna be one of the biggest mcu stars moving forward yeah. what is it like working with her oh my god uh i walked in Mm -hmm. to hair and makeup trailer. And she was sitting there getting her makeup done and I was like, oh my God, oh my God, that's Wait, did you know your scene was with her? I did, I did. I think um, once I got the sides for the actual, actual okay. scene, I was like, oh, oh my God. And <laughs> she's, she's insane. Her 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 caliber of, of skill is, I mean, unprecedented really at her age. Mm. And, um, and then she, I walked in and yeah. she was getting her hair and makeup done. She was like, hi, like I'm Florence. And it was what? like five in the morning. And like, oh my God, like what is my life? What is my right, life? Right. And she was just so kind, so goofy mm. the entire time. Like uh, Yelena and Florence are kind of the same person in terms of yeah. their, their humor and, um, and, and their down to earthness. So it was just really lovely working with her and, and she hyped me up the whole time. She, oh. I, I let her know that it was my first time on set and she was just so supportive the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, when I rapped, she, uh, she had everyone clap for me. It was, it was really just like the kindest soul, the kindest soul. Like how, how long did that sort of scene, you know, how, how long did you guys film that? Was it like, were you like super nervous just being like in a speaking role like that? Because oh, you're not oh, just yeah. kicking ass. You're actually you actually have to interact with with, with the actual yeah. actors. What is that yeah. like? Uh, it's nerve wracking. It was very and especially across Florence, it was like oh my god. She, I mean, it was it was really nerve wracking, and it was my first time on set. I had no idea. I had no idea what I was doing. Right. Um, and and then to have to do a Filipino accent as well was so like there was so many factors that day where I was just so nervous. Um, and I mean, I hope it translated uh, well, but it was it took. It took um, about a day for the scene when we're all sitting down, and then the fight scene was another day, mm -hmm. uh, which is obviously like so interesting because you see me for like two seconds, but I was there for for like forty eight hour shooting. Did, oh. did they deliberately ask you to do a Filipino accent? They did. 
They did. Um, it started with the auditions. Uh, the first round, they were just like, do whatever accents. Okay, yeah. And I, I tried a Russian accent. I was not trained in a Russian accent, so I, I gave it a go. Um, and then I did a Filipino accent. And then they were like, can you do basically either another Asian accent? Like, just they wanted to see more Asian, more foreign um, right, right, yeah. um, accents. And so I did one. <laughs> I did one that was more of someone who grew up in the Philippines, but uh, had uh, access to more Western media and things right, like right. that. And one yeah. I did very, very, very Filipino. And <laughs> I really liked that one. Um, and then there, it was really nerve wracking because I think you grow up when you when you grow up in america i think as a filipino especially uh, the daughter and sister of like filipino immigrants you are taught that the thicker your accent the less you have assimilated and so right. there was a very big dissonance for me because i grew like being a black widow like it's sexy you're attractive mm -hmm. and i think you don't associate those things with a Filipino accent and so right. to, to merge the two is very there was such a dissonance to, to bridge the gap between those two and so it was really nerve-wracking um but, it, but it's, it's such a big deal I guess to have a canonically Filipino black widow no less or even even like a sort of um, a Marvel character at least in the MCU it's like I think we only have um Ned from Spider-Man who is like Filipino yeah. and okay. I don't think is, is there anyone else in the MCU that's actually like Filipino on screen? Not that I know of. I think I yeah. So you're really, you're a big deal. Like in, I in, think, uh, oh, thank like you. On, on a lot of levels, it, it's it's so interesting. Um, yeah. Uh, so Bird and Birdie did the episode. Yes. What is it like working with them? They were, I mean, I keep saying this, but everyone on set was so kind. I, I mean, they were, they new again they just mentioned to me everyone mentioned to me, it was like this is your first time um it's not going to be your last time for sure wow. um, and they were so sweet because uh at the time they said when they saw me i obviously had no credits yet on imdb or anywhere and they just said you know that doesn't matter to us and the wow. fact that someone uh, the fact that marvel took so many green artists on board for hawkeye was Wow. I mean, for a lot of things was was insane. I mean, yeah, I'd never done anything professionally, and then, and then they were just super kind enough to um, to bring me on, and they were so kind on set about it too. Um, really taking interesting me with with something as 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 big as this. I mean, it was a little scene, but something as big as being yeah, a black big, widow. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's so like I like I said, it's so significant on like a lot of levels. Mm -hmm. The character being Filipino, you. And I don't know. It, and to know that they, like you said, they they took in a lot of first timers on mm -hmm. set, and they didn't make it feel weird for any of them. They didn't feel like, oh, why are we even here? Like you don't yeah. know anything. And yeah. that is so very nice to hear. Um, like prior to this, how big of a fan were you about about Marvel and the MCU? Gigantic. Okay. Gigantic. I mean, throughout my training. I mean, everyone knew me as like, oh, she's gonna be in the MCU, or she wants to be. She really, right, really right. wants to be in the MCU. Um, yeah, I grew up with it. I mean, I was 13, 12 or 13 when the first Avengers came out. And it was the feeling of sitting in the theater and watching the Avengers for the first time. It, yeah. It's it's magical, right. it's magical. And then, I mean, obviously growing up with, with the rest of the movies and things like that, I grew up with the movies, and right. and then to suddenly be 22 and then to be a Black Widow uh, was really crazy. I, I guess I want to ask next: what What do you think? What do you think happened to Sonya in those five years? I was sort of hoping, like, as soon as that that whole thing, when yeah. Florence gets dust and everything goes back, I was like, oh my god, is she still there? Yeah, <laughs> Are yeah. Are <they> dead? <laughs> <laughs> um, in, your, in your head or in your heart, what do you think? Or like, where do you envision Sonya? being is she ha does she have kids is she still an assassin what do you think yeah oh she definitely does not have kids <laughs> she definitely does not have kids uh definitely uh contract doing contract work again um yeah. Anna, Anna mentions it uh when yeah. it comes back i think i mean the day of the mansion i think opened up sonia's eyes to 
oh, I can have all this because I do have, mm. I have the skill, I have right. the talent and I don't know, it's what I'm used to. And, and I think, uh, I think in my head, the pain of the blip, I think definitely pushes Sonia to, to pursue the same work again as a mm. black widow, um, because so much I mean the same thing with Ronan that happened um right. so much collective pain and what do you do during pain is you, you go back to what's familiar what, what what feels comfortable for you and I think Sonia definitely does that and she's rich right <laughs> <For sure>. right <laughs>